Welcome, friends. I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We're in Genesis chapter 37. We just began to look at the uh, life of Joseph, and there's so many wonderful things that we can learn from his life. And there are so many ways that Joseph is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons why we can learn so many wonderful things about his life. There's no greater person that we can emulate than Jesus Christ. And uh, certainly Christ is seen as you look at the life of Joseph. And uh, we're in Genesis chapter 37. And I want to look at verses 5 through 11 where we see that uh, Joseph receives some divine knowledge here. And uh, in these, we're going to see how he continues to picture for us the Lord Jesus Christ. So Genesis 37, verse 5, it says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in a field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed rule or reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told his brethren, and they and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and moon and the loving stars make obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So as we look into this, we see that uh, Joseph here gets some knowledge of the future. Of course, we know in being a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus had knowledge of the future as well, and there were many times through the course of his earthly life uh, that he gave uh, some words of advice and counsel to his disciples, to those who were around him, of that which was going to take place in the end time. Of course, Jesus was the written or the living word of God, and we have in our hands the written word of God, which tells us all about uh, prophecy and that which is going to happen. And we see that in uh, that Joseph had knowledge of the future, and we see that through um, these dreams that Joseph had in verses five and through and verse nine. Now, the emphasis this emphasizes God's practice of repeating important truths because God gave him two dreams that had the exact same message in them, and uh, God did that to reaffirm that to uh, Joseph. And uh, as we think about Joseph receiving divine knowledge through these dreams, let me just remind you today um, that through two dreams, Joseph received some messages from God. But uh, God continues to speak today, but he does not do it through dreams or experiences. He does it through the word of God. And it's sad, but there are many today who will put experiences or they'll put dreams over the written word of God. I don't care what the word of God says. This is what I learned in my dream or whatever. And we need to be very careful because God speaks today through his word. And God is never going to say anything to you that is contrary to the word of God. And uh, so then we see that Joseph was to be exalted above his brethren. Notice verses 6 and 7. He said, Unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in a field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. So there we see from those verses that it makes it very clear that Joseph was going to be exalted above his brethren. And of course, um, Joseph's brothers did not take too kindly to the words that Joseph said. And they, they matter of fact, they hated him for what Joseph said. And some would even go as far as today, as they study through this, to question whether or not Joseph should have even told the dreams. Should Joseph tell the dreams when he knew it was going to stir up such hatred toward him and such envy toward him? And I personally believe that it was very important that Joseph tell these dreams, for if Joseph had not told the dreams, then the fulfillment of them would have had little or no significance in the minds of his family. But you can be assured in the end of the story 
uh, as Joseph reveals himself to them, that every single one that's standing there is mindful of the dream that Joseph shared with them so many years earlier. Telling these dreams as he did made the fulfillment of them uh, made him uh, made, you know, made the fulfillment of the great vindicator of Joseph's person and of God's power. It showed us the kind of character that Joseph had, but then it also showed us the kind of power that God has, and that absolutely nothing is beyond the power of our God. And this is also evidence that sometimes, you know, when we speak the truth, even when we speak it in love, it will upset some people, no matter how tactfully the truth is spoken, but yet we must continue to speak the truth. And uh, as we think about Joseph here being exalted above his brethren, um, let me just remind you of the simple truth that even in this, that Joseph is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is going to be exalted above all. In Philippians chapter 2, and in verses 9 through 11, it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So there we see there that the Bible makes it very clear to us that Jesus is going to be exalted above every single person who has ever lived on this earth. But not only was Joseph to be exalted, but we see here also that his brothers were to bow down to him. Look at in verses 7 and verse 9. It says, Behold, we were binding sheaves in a field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. Verse 9, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun, moon, and, star, and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. So Joseph tells him here that his brothers were, were going to bow down to him. And uh, the, steef, the sheaf standing upright, in contrast to the other sheaves, uh, especially emphasizes the elevation of Joseph over his brothers. The obeisance that is made by the sheaves and the sun and the moon and the stars forecasting the esteem that Joseph or that Jacob rather and his family would one day have and that they would give to Joseph. And so they would bow down to him. And the exact same thing, friends, is true of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that every one of us will give an account of himself to God in Romans 14, 12. But in the verse prior to that, Romans chapter 14 and verse 11, it says this. It says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. And we saw that also fleshed out in the verses of Philippians 2, 9 through 11, as we read them. And uh, Joseph's brothers did not want Joseph reigning over him. Even And this is brought out as Joseph tells him this dream. Notice their reaction in verse 8. His, bro <coughs> his brother said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hate him yet the more for his words. Joseph's brothers did not want that. Neither... Friends, and that exact same thing is true in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, people did not want him to reign over them as well. And Joseph was hated for his words. Verse 8 tells us, They hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And friends, the same thing was true with the Lord Jesus. When he was here on this earth, as he proclaimed the truth of the word of God, there was many that hated him for his words. Friends, heavenly honor seldom will bring with it earthly honor. Rather, many times heavenly honor will bring earthly hate and harassment by those who do not like the honor that Christ brings to us. Now, the word in verse 10, let me just say this as we close, verses 10 and 11 very quickly. The word rebuked in verse 10 is a very strong word. Matter of fact, Leopold says that it means to scream at or to sharply rebuke him. So Jacob sharply rebuked Jacob, or jo Jacob sharply rebuked Joseph, rather, and Joseph and Jacob had a very good relationship. So this exchange would have really hurt Joseph. Opposition from unexpected and surprising sources always hurts more than opposition from sources that we expect opposition from. 
And then in verse 11, we see that Jacob's reaction to the dreams changed. He finally came to the place where he observes the dreams. That word means that he retained them, he kept them, he preserved them, he thought about it. It's very similar to the attitude that Mary had when it says in Luke 2, 19, that Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. You see, Jacob thought about this revelation that God had given to Joseph, and Jacob began to realize that these dreams were meaningful and that they had an important message. He did not understand it all yet, but he would retain the dreams in his heart and ponder them for future understanding. And friends, you and I, even when we don't understand it, when God speaks, we need to obey. And even if we don't fully understand it, we still need to follow him and do as he commands. Have a great day.